This is a section on how to train an assistant in seven days. What we did was take one of our technical support professionals at TDO, our software program, who had no background in the dental operatory or dental assisting, and borrow, borrow her for a week, two hours a day. We don't have time, obviously, to go over every single step during that week, but I thought I could help you by just giving you a sense of the process and the approach we used, showing you some of the inflection points and benchmarks, and help you get on your way in a systematic way. For this reason, we videotaped every training session, so I have a very good record of her progress and what exercises worked and didn't work. So this is Vanessa. She was hired by TDO Software for her problem-solving skills and computer networking issues that we have to manage in our technical support for the software. And she had never been in a dental operatory other than as a patient. I asked Luis, our CEO, if I could borrow her two hours a day for seven days and see if we could train her to function at a high level as my assistant. He said yes, and we filmed the entire training process, some of which I'm going to show you now. The best way I can help you with this is not reviewing the specific training details, but to help you understand the process we used in accomplishing this tax, task and explain how we approach the problem. We are going to train her professionally. By that I mean in a systematic way, the way you were trained as a dentist. By that I mean systematically and incrementally. Such a process is part of cognitive ergonomics how one goes about creating a culture of excellence, how one trains for teamwork, and how one keeps your team accountable. Part of this structured environment is starting out with an understanding of how the process will work, just as you were told in dental school that you would not be thrown into an environment for which you had not been trained. So it is very important to announce at the beginning that they will never be expected to perform any task for which they have not been intensively trained for. This is the very first session with Vanessa, and this is how we started. First of all, because this is a pretty stressful job, uh, I want you to know that I will never sit you down with the patient and expect you to do something that you haven't practiced already thousands of times, and this will reduce the stress for you tremendously. You will never have to be expected to do anything that you aren't completely comfortable doing and have practiced over and over again. And this will allow you to sit here comfortably and confidently while we treat patients. So these are some of the conceptual guidelines that you can use to improve your training protocols. We won't have time to review all of them in detail, but I would like to spend some time on the first three because they are so important in developing confidence and competence. Develop keystone habits, realize early small wins, and understanding that high skill level is achieved in a series of small incremental steps and not all at once. The conceptual step in professional training is to understand the role of keystone habits and to busy yourself in identifying and establishing those habits in the person you are training. Keystone habits are habits that lead to the development of multiple good habits. So the mirror skill is a keystone habit. Without that habit, it is difficult to get very far in microscopic assisting. The thing about keystone habits is that they have a chain effect in your life that produces any number of positive outcomes separate from the benefit that was derived by developing the original habit. The second conceptual idea that can help you is to build value by accomplishing small wins. Small wins are exactly what they sound like and are part of how keystone habits create widespread changes. Once a small win has been accomplished, forces are set in motion that favor another small win. Small wins fuel transformative changes by leveraging tiny advantages into patterns that convince people that bigger achievements are within reach. What I hope you are realizing by now is that much of the tremendous efficiency of this approach is due to the fact of leveraging many small advantages that may seem insignificant when observed in isolation, but when seen combined with many other small advantages, result in breakthrough achievements and efficiency in teamwork to say nothing in reductions in frustration and wasted efforts. A huge body of research has shown that small wins have enormous power 
an influence disproportionate to the accomplishments of the victories themselves. The third principle that can help your training processes is to understand the incremental and sequential nature of excellence. Emphasize in the beginning that they will be trained by learning one skill at a time and will repeat that skill thousands of times before being asked to do it with a real patient. So I have three recommendations that can help you. Number one, learn without the scope first. Get the muscle memory issues implanted before going to the scope. Since this is a tactile skill, practice blindfolded part of the time, focusing only on the tactile feel of the activity. And three, have the assistant learn the doctor side as well. This will help with their perspective and what the doctor requires and provides the assistant with a full understanding of how anticipation and small ergonomic errors affect teamwork and skillfulness. Let's have you try it. You'll fumble with it initially here to begin with. That's it. Okay. I want you to watch Joy do this again. See if you can pick anything up. Little finger. Step one. Little finger. Step two. Grab, step three, place, step four, move. Okay, one more time. Step one, touch. Step two, grab. Step three, place. Step four, exit. Step one, touch. Step two, grab. Step three, place. Step four, exit. Perfect. Let's see if you can do it blindfolded. Close your eyes. Okay. Go. Okay. Again. Good. Just concentrate on the tactiles. So to review, there are four cornerstones of skill development. Number one, explain both the process clearly as well as the minute details and how skill development will proceed sequentially. They will have a roadmap, a benchmark, and what you expect and where they will be at the end of the process. This is very important. Two, demonstrate the skill for them and then observe them practicing it until they can do it right. Three, have them repeat the skill thousands of times until it is automatically and embedded in their muscle memory. Four, review every single skill every day from day one. If you do these things, you will find you can train an assistant easily in seven days. So this is an incremental sequential process where you will learn one skill at a time. You will practice it thousands of times over and over again until you don't even have to think about it.